Hello, you're listening to the Shetland Times podcast, and this week I, your host Marilyn Robertson, I'm joined by Karen Cunningham, the wordplay curator. Hello, Karen. Hello there, Marilyn. It's lovely to be here. Oh, it's lovely to have you on the podcast. Thank you very much because you have just landed today. Yep, um, <laughs> and we had a good flight coming in, but some of the flights uh, coming behind me were a wee bit delayed. Um, I think it was just a bit misty, but. Uh, It was quite good because it did mean I got to spend half an hour I wasn't expecting with the first of our wordplay guests, Judy Murray. So her and I had a coffee at Sunbury Airport while we were waiting for another plane to arrive. And there's Judy Murray who don't know the score. Andy Murray's mum. Absolutely, absolutely. And I have to say uh, she was a big hit with George, our taxi driver, who was sitting with us and uh, I think it's going to be a really good event because she's a fascinating woman to, to listen to. She's an incredible life story and uh, she's she's very charming and very glamorous. Um, so I managed to sneak in some questions about what it was like behind the scenes at Strictly. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. She's so, the um, about Strictly yet. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to the, the opening night on Thursday and she's going to be our first guest. And uh, she's quite glamorous as well. Yeah. So I think I think it's going to be it's going to be quite special. And by Thursday, that's if you're listening to this day, the day the podcast gets released, that's tonight, Thursday, the second of November. Yeah. So um, you've been coming up to Shetland over the past few years. Yeah, my friends, uh, my my best friend Ruth and her family moved up about ten years ago, and. Uh, I started visiting, um, so I just fell in love with the place. There's something just very special about it, and um, partly I I had a real interest in um, the Norse sagas, the Icelandic yeah, sagas. Like, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I I just found the whole story of Uphelia and the the Viking links. Um, and the fact that um, you, you know you still have your own dialect here that's still very very strong, I was just fascinated by the culture and the heritage, and uh, of course the landscape is unique. So it's a real pleasure for me to come up. So I couldn't quite believe my luck uh, when I saw the uh, the the job for the curator of wordplay being advertised on the Shetland Arts. Uh, website so I, I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring and I was absolutely delighted when I when I when I was offered the job. But it's a pleasure to have you here as well as curated for Chat and Wordplay because you've done a lot of work was it with the Glasgow Writing Festival you helped establish the Writing Festival in Glasgow. Yeah um I used to be um head of libraries in in Glasgow um, a fantastic job, just just my dream job, and because I was in charge, I also got to kind of do lots of things that I, I really liked, you know, I really liked to do. So, um, a way back in I think two thousand and four, I was invited to be a judge on the Orange Prize for Fiction. Oh, nice! And that was just it was an immensely interesting time. It was just fantastic. Um, and it just made me wonder why a big city like Glasgow didn't have its own book festival. Yeah. And myself and my friends regularly used to travel through to, to Edinburgh to the book festival there. Oh, and I August, thought, do you know, we, yeah. we, can, we can do this <laughs> here, that there's an audience here for this. So um, as part of the library's re- reader development program um we decided to set up a book festival and we called it i write oh okay um, yeah because i thought a writing festival when I yeah 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 I so write. it's a-y-e-w-r-i-t-e <laughs> and um it just so that that was in 2004 and um I was director of of I Write for ten years uh, until I, I finished up working working in Glasgow libraries um, back in twenty fourteen. That was just at the end of the Commonwealth Games, so um, it was just fantastic. Um, so 
in the few years in between, I was doing kind of freelance work. Um, I, I was doing so, some work on journalism, uh, a project called Future News, which was a, an international training conference for young journalists, and I was director of the Festival of Architecture. So Wordplay has given me an opportunity to come back in to my first love, which is books and yeah. reading. But it's funny because you mentioned the journalism and that's very similar to one of the events we actually have yeah, at this festival yeah. as well. Um, well, partly um, when we set up High Right in Glasgow, uh, there was a lot of literary fiction in the first year, the kind of things I liked to I liked to read. Yeah. Um, and the audiences turned out, but we also got feedback from the audiences that they wanted to see things that were a bit different. So in Glasgow, we started to introduce more in the way of current affairs mm-hmm. and politics um, and economics. Um, and those were the events that were really, really popular with the biggest audience. It also brought in a more diverse audience. Um, so we had more men turning up to those kinds of events. So uh, when I was approached uh, about wordplay and I looked at the feedback from the literature conversation that Shetland Arts had held, um, it struck me that there were some very, very similar points being made in that and that it wasn't... People were looking for more than just fiction. So that's why, um, through some of my, my contacts in journalism, uh, we've got you know people like Polly Toynbee and David Walker coming up. That That's going to be a smashing event. And we're very on Adam Sivico of the Shetland Times. Well, um, <laughs> Adam has been incredible. Uh, Shetland Times have been really, really supportive. Um, they're running the bookshop for yeah. us at, at the Murillo. So the fabulous Shetland Times bookshop, um, which I always visited whenever I'm, I'm, I'm up, because uh, it's a smashing bookshop, um, they, that's going to be at the Murillo. Uh, so they're well stocked up with all, with all of the, the, the books that are being featured at Wordplay. And um, Adam is going to be chairing one of our events, one of our debate events, which is on Saturday. Um, And it's called uh, Post-Truth, How Bullshit, if I'm allowed to say that word. You can. (laughs) On the podcast, I'll just put out a disclaimer. Disclaimer warning. (laughs) It's the title of the book, uh, Post truth, how how bullshit conquered the world, and it, I mean it couldn't be more relevant yeah. than what's been happening this week. Oh my gosh, I looked and at the all press the Trump stuff, and oh my goodness, so um, the number of lies. Well, hmm? let's talk about the number of lies, and it makes me think: how are these people not up, like drawn up on their lies? It's scary. It seems almost incredible. And James Ball, who's written the the, the book, um, he he used to work for the Guardian. He currently works uh, for BuzzFeed. Um, he's done an incredible job in uncovering some of this, um, and and is it's it's a fabulous book. We've also got Marianne Taylor from the the Herald, um, and she's beginning to make a bit of a name for herself. But I think it's not just that international. Uh, context that we need to look at closer to home yeah. um, you know that it, it seems very clear now than when we look back on and I don't think it matters what side you may have been on or how you voted but it's undoubtedly true that there were a lot of lies and fabrication yeah. told around Brexit and I also feel that it's worth thinking about even much more local context you know what what's happening in local politics what's happening around local campaigns what's happening around the environment you know let's let's start to think about all of this so um 
Maybe uh, Shetlander can come along and ask some questions about to what extent Shetland is a post-truth society. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. <laughs> and it is one of those things because um, I think once you start having campaigns that live on lies, mm-hmm. then what happens is the next time there's uh, an election coming up, rather than politicians really stating what they're going to do to change, it becomes a slander match between the politicians, and there's no growth from that. Absolutely. And Sorry, we, no, really no, 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 but we're... <laughs> and the other thing is, of course, we, we're sitting doing a blog just now, yeah. um, and uh, social media really is kind of beginning to take over our lives, and... Yeah. You know, I'm I'm as guilty of it as as anyone else. You know, I'm absolutely fascinated by Facebook and Twitter, but I'm f- very conscious uh, that I'm living within this social media bubble yes. where all my friends probably think much the same as as I do. Yes. And I, I I actively make myself go and look at other news sources um, because I, I am aware of it, but I'm not sure that, that everybody isn't particularly younger people. Per, perhaps they, it's not always clear what sources of news that we can trust and which ones just have no basis in truth at all. It is interesting, and it is that bubble thing is true, because when you get really shocked by the outcome of a vote, Mm. and you have to remind yourself, well, if you are surrounded by like-minded folk, then there could be so many more people of different Uh So that, sorry, that talk has went on Saturday. That's that's on Saturday, (laughs) and that's at (laughs) 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the Muriel. Oh, okay, that's brilliant. That's an auditorium. Yeah. Discussion. That's amazing. I like that as well because it's very clear as well straight away the variety you can go to this weekend. Yeah, one of the events that I think is going to be really, really good fun. Um, I think I know what you're going to say. Is no Eriki. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say they're absolutely mental. These these guys yeah. uh, that are doing it. It's a uh, very off the wall poetry collective um, based in Edinburgh um, Stanley Odd I love uh, Stanley Odd I I love Stanley Odd as well Stanley Odd um, did a special song for me when I was finishing up at the Mitchell in in Glasgow I want to hear that and uh, I commissioned them years back to to do a, a, to to write a song uh, for a Nelson Mandela event oh, we, we were we were doing. So they're really fantastic guys, very very talented, um, and um, the, you know the the groups they are assembling round about them. So it's going to be great fun, yeah. I think. So I wanted Stanley Odd to come up to Shetland for years. And it's amazing as well, because you... Although I th- I think this is null and void now, but years ago, the words Scotland and hip-hop, or Scottish <laughs> hip-hop, just didn't seem to work. No. And it's so good. There's so many amazing hip-hop and rappers in Scotland, and I think this is coming to fruition now, and a lot of that is thanks to Stanley Odd. Mm-hmm. He's brilliant. Guys, please Google him. Dave. <laughs> yeah, he's not actually called yeah, yeah, Stanley. Sorry, the band but... is Stanley Odd, isn't it? The group. But uh, Michael, <laughs> Michael Pedersen and Kevin Williamson, uh, who are the kind of core of, of Noi Rike, they're just incredibly creative, well-connected guys. And... Um, Kevin but, is actually like best mates with Irvin Welsh, so we hoped for oh, a minute cool. he might be able to come up with them, but he's in America, unfortunately. Oh, but America. do you know, maybe maybe next and, year, yeah. <laughs> maybe if he gives a good report, everybody give him a great reception. <laughs> yeah, he'll, absolutely. He'll get Irvin Welsh in Turn next out because you'll have a brilliant time. It'll be a, a, a really great party night. And we've got Shetland film poet Roseanne Watt as well. And yeah, too, that's right. Brilliant. You might have seen their films. Well. I'd probably seen their films in screenplay. Mm-hmm. She um turned the listeners because she went that screenplay. No, sadly. But um she um has done and she's done film poetry in Edinburgh as well. Yeah, she's yeah. a lot of work there. But it's really exciting because she's doing a doctorate currently in film poetry. So every time she comes to Shetland we get this great chance to get a glimpse of what she's been working on. And it's beautiful, beautiful work. 
really yeah it's it's just it's it's that's going to be amazing i think but we've got lots of very very good writers as well um chris dolan louise welsh christopher brookmeyer um a wee bit of a change for christopher brookmeyer for those of you uh who know his crime books uh this is the very first sci-fi thriller oh, cool. that he's ever done and officially the publication date's the 9th of November so we're getting advanced copies of it uh, oh, nice. here so effectively it's been launched in, in Shetland so that's a bit of a that's a bit of a coup for wordplay uh, and then of course we're going to be kind of finishing off on uh, Sunday night with Liz Lockhead um, and Liz is just my all time favourite Favourite poet. Has she been up here before? For she she has, yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. That's, I, was that oh, one? she's been in Shetland was before. That, yeah. I, I, I know that. And she's really looking forward to to coming back. Um, she's going to be doing some school stuff for us as well. Quite yeah. a few of our authors are uh, are, are doing that as, as well. So... Um, it's it's really it's it's going to be really nice and I get to sit down and just have a chat with her um and hear what she's been up to since she finished up being Scotland's Macker because she's yeah. not taking it easy. Um I can hardly get hold of her to be honest. So, so she seems to be really, really busy. She was actually doing some stuff with Noi Riki as well. Oh, cool. So she's taken uh, a a, diff- a change of direction. So can it's, I just, oh sorry, to interrupt. I just want no. to ask what Nairiki means. Is um, it a play on? It, it's new like or? well, it's like old Riki. Yeah. So they're they're the new version of it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I just wondering. Yeah, because I thought that's well. Because when I read it, I read new Riki. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's a new Riki. And then I kept, couldn't stop thinking about the play Ubu Roy and getting uh-huh. really confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's what it is. Okay, so it's like the new yeah. the new generation. Yeah. That's really cool. How is it coming up to Shetland? Is this your first time coming up to Shetland in a professional capacity? Well, no. Um, since I've been up a few times since I was uh, yeah. since I was appointed to uh, do the plan and have meetings, um, and I had a a few days based at the Maril in the in the summer, and I was working in one of the dressing rooms um, with a beautiful view out across across the harbour and I was just fascinated. I could hardly do any work because I just kept <laughs> I just kept looking out at the sky and how much it was changing. I've got a whole series of photos from really, really dark, dark grey where you couldn't see anything to the most uh, uh, you know, amazing blues and greens. It was just gorgeous. Do you see my favourite Selkie? The big seal. Did I you see him? didn't, <laughs> unfortunately. When I see over the festival, there's uh-huh. a seal that I think he gets fed at the fish market. Uh-huh. So he doesn't ever have to catch his own fish. And he, my dad said if you put legs on him, he'd be the size of a coup on land. <laughs> and he, he's just a seal. And he, I'm saying this listeners, if you ever come to Manil, look at the windows, because he actually can't, he doesn't seem to swim like a normal seal. Most of the time, he just has his face pointed right oh, out the water. Just looking gorgeous. Yeah, and he just has to keep his nose upright and have some breath, and then he sinks back down again. Mm. Anyway. Well, I'm glad he wasn't about uh, when I was there, because that was at the time when the, the killer whales were out, out and about. Oh, so did you see them? I didn't oh, see them again, but I, I saw the, like, like everyone else, I, I, I saw the, 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 the videos of it, but I didn't, uh, I didn't see them myself but it was very exciting to know they were about it was a bit scary <laughs> yeah it's amazing do you find when you're curating a festival in Shetland that, that actually the kind of adventure to coming to Shetland and the kind of like you say it was quite unique with its culture actually can help attract more people to take part in the festival. yeah it's been it's it's been interesting because I didn't know how it was going to work now yeah. for me um I I'm only doing this because it's great fun yeah. and I get the opportunity to to come you know to come here. I wasn't sure how it was going to to play. So um, when I was contacting some of the London publishers in particular, they were saying, "Oh, but 
uh, what happens? What if they get stranded? And how long does it take? And how do they get there? They had the best time of their life. And, <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's kind of what I had to to promise. Um, and some people were put off by the distance and the strangeness, and said, "Oh well, you know, I can't take three days out to to come up." Okay. Um, some people said I'd love to do it if uh, if it didn't take so long. Other people are saying I've never been to Shetland. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I'd love to come. And that's been the overwhelming response. Um, we were quite late in starting the the planning. Okay. For were to play this year so a lot of people I well not a lot but a few people I did approach straight away who seemed obvious I'll not give you their names yet um (laughs) said oh my goodness we'd love to absolutely love to come unfortunately can't because we're not available we're already committed but next year Ask, ask us oh, again so potential yeah. oh, uh, maybe for some some other names so um if people turn out and it's a success this year uh, i'd like to think we can grow and develop it yeah definitely oh that's exciting that's also exciting to know when plans are in the way for future mm. years but i found that as well i used to organize a rock festival in Shetland, the metal music festival and it was that kind of thing of you have to catch them really early uh-huh. because there's so much booked up a year and a half in advance. Yeah. But, um, the, the time of year that we're having it um, is challenging for quite a lot of people as okay. well. You, you know, Shetland in November, are you mad? But um, it's, the, it's the best time. People are looking for things to do. And, um, do you know, I, I just think it's, I think it's quite special. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting as well. Like, when you say to Shetland, they're like, fuck, and I go, oh, I don't go all the way there. Because it's just a matter of life for us. Like uh-huh. you, you go on the boat for that long, or do you have to fly, and it's just fine. But because I always just think folks think, ah, oh, it's an adventure. I'm up for that. Oh yes, and I th- I, that's the way most people yeah. are are looking at it. And um, strangely enough, as well, uh, a lot of the national organisations, Scottish Poetry Library, Scottish Publishers Association. Creative Scotland, Scottish Library Information Council. When I was talking to some of my contacts uh, on those organisations, they all said, we've never been to Shetland, we want to come up. So um, quite a lot of people are coming up to offer support and take part in the creative conversation as well. So that's hopefully going to raise the the profile of what we're doing um, at Shetland Arts as well, so that yeah. that's a good thing. If people come and enjoy it, then they'll absolutely they'll literally they'll... tell their friends. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Is there any event you're really excited about as well? Like not mentioned. Um. Oh, that's really hard though, because there's a whole was it four packed days of events. What. One of my favourite uh, writers is uh, Mary Hederick. <gasps> yes. <laughs> I know, oh, so I know, excited. I know. Um, and the great thing about Mary is I, I, I've i worked with, with her in the past quite a lot and I'm just the biggest fan of Katie Morag yeah. that there's there's ever been. So, um, you know, when I started thinking about doing a, a children's programme, a schools programme, um, I thought of Mary and I phoned her up and said I don't suppose you'd think of doing this for me and she said oh well okay then but only if I can do an adult event as well yeah. so uh, she's doing her Shetland Rambles book yeah, as as well so that's that's lovely but she's just uh, she's just fabulous um oh, she's a lovely lovely woman her Shetland Rambles book is, is that based on the um is it someone who came here in the Victoria that's, Times that's, and did that's the work right. Shetland? Yep, yep. And those books are apparently amazing. So she's kind of redone those works, has she? That's that's right. That apparently be she um, she kind of w- went round and slept in a car and you, ah. do, do you know how while, while she was while she was doing it. It seems like so. a kind of extra treat to uh-huh. have her for screenplay, but also have her with this focused work <laughs> on Shetland. I knew, I knew, uh, which is great. And Sergio Kashke, uh, one of the screenwriters 
who's doing an event with his wife, uh, Helen Fitzgerald, oh, yes. and Chris Dolan. Um, Chris Dolan's a, a well-known um, screenwriter and scriptwriter as well. Um, he did the Katie Morag for TV. So that series, <laughs> all is these things brilliant. link it. You know when you watch, you know when you've like, because I grew, I grew up reading Katie Morag, and it's very Scottish, but there's, it was lovely because it's like the closest thing I had as a book as a uh-huh. band to, to, to your, your childhood. Yeah, and I think I so I. I like most people. Even I think if you, if it's very different to your life, you just love Katie Morag. So I mind when it came on CBBC or CBBC. I was so worried how it would, they would portray it on the mm-hmm. screen, and I just love it. Like I sit and watch it now because it's they've mm-hmm. just done it so well. They're and so true to it. They're not yeah, like, even mm-hmm. Granny's perfect, oh, isn't she? <laughs> Granny, Granny, was it Granny Island and Granny Mainland? <laughs> yeah. And um, I owe an enormous thank you to some of my uh, Scottish writer friends uh, who are coming up and they've basically just said, we'll do whatever you want us to. So, um, you know, somebody like Chris Stolen, um, he's doing a couple of sessions around his, his own work, one around the script writing and a conversation on... Um, writing with Chris Brookmeyer, but he's also doing uh, workshops, as is um, Louise Welsh, who's talking about her own work, but she's also doing some creative writing workshops with Zoe Strachan. Um, and you just think that it's great that they're just doing, they're doing this extra stuff and doing some interviewing as well. So everybody's kind of mucking in. It costs so much money to bring people up here. Yeah, we need, we we need to make them really work hard. <laughs> I can plug, uh, I can plug my events as well. What yeah. are you doing? I'm doing, You're doing I'm the doing social. Some, yes, I'm doing some stand up at the Shetland for what's called an egg mm-hmm. on Friday night, and then I'm driving straight into Noyadi. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm also. Well, you can't miss that. No, best of both worlds. And then on Sunday, uh, we've got um, a producer, so it's really exciting, a producer from BBC The Social. In fact, she's my producer. She's absolutely amazing. That's Kirsty. She's coming up on Sunday, and we're doing a kind of introduction of BBC The Social. And if people are interested in being involved and want to learn more about it, or about video making or promoting yourself online in general and doing so safely, then um, and we're doing the this is linking back to some of the um, adult debate things we're doing around post truth as well, yeah. and the whole thing about social media. See, there's a plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's all nicely tied together. To a nice story. But it's lovely. It's lovely that you come back. It's lovely that someone with such an interest in Shetland is like, I can do this because I feel like. What you've done, just looking at the Wordplay programme, is you've brought lots of exciting things to Shetland, but it's also like a really strong celebration of Shetland's own culture and writing I hope as well. So. And it's and a I, nice, I it? hope it's that. A board. I hope that might grow. Um, yeah. Let, let's let's see, maybe they'll just say, oh, we hated that, don't bother coming back. Oh, but no. I'll be back to Shetland anyway. Yeah. <laughs> It's been lovely to have you back, and it's been lovely having you on the show today. I've I've had a great time. It's been lovely talking to you. Yes, you too. Thank you, Cam. And I should say, if you're interested in any events, they're all online at Shetland Art, so the programmes are online. And there should be information in the Shetland Times as well, so go by Shetland Times tomorrow and and, uh, come listen to Adam, the Mm. editor, talking on Saturday. Question him. Absolutely. (laughs) Thank you very much, Cam. You're very welcome. Thanks very much.